Welcome to the first video in a series on representations of discrete groups, also known as representation theory. And there's a lot of different reasons that people are interested in studying representation theory. It might be that it fits nicely in your schedule and you heard that the professor is an easy grader. It might be that you're interested in the applications. I know of applications in physics and chemistry, to name a few. Uh, it might be just that you're interested in it for the pure beauty of mathematics. I'm not here to judge. But whatever the reason you're studying it, let's jump right in and start with a definition of what a representation of a group is. So a representation of a group G over a field F is a homomorphism, rho, that maps from your group to the group of general linear matrices, right? G, L, N, F. N is a natural number, and we say that N is the degree of the representation. Now, F is a field. For a lot of the topics that I'm covering, F is going to be the real numbers or the complex numbers. But at its core, a representation can be over any field. You could use the integers mod P, where P is a prime. You could use the rational numbers. Uh, you could even use the quaternions, denoted usually with an H, for Hamilton, who discovered them. But they're not commutative. I'm going to leave them out for the purposes of our videos. And again, I'd like to mention that for this video series, we're going to be looking at discrete groups. There's a whole another topic of representations of Lie groups. Lie groups are continuous groups, of course. And I'm going to leave that for someone who's more qualified to make a YouTube playlist about. Okay, the next thing that I would like to do is give an example of a representation. Now this is going to seem a bit like magic at first, I'm just going to give it to you, I'm not going to explain where it comes from, but it'll give you an idea of what's going on with representations of groups, and it'll be a nice starting place that we can come back to and talk about in further videos. Okay, so the first example that I'd like to look at involves the group D8, right, that's the symmetries of a square, and we're going to be mapping to GL2R, right, so invertible matrices of dimension 2, right, the 2 by 2 matrices, with real entries in the array. D8 can be written in this form. This is called a presentation of a group, if you've never seen that before. And it uniquely specifies all the properties of D8. If you have two elements, A and B, that satisfy these relationships, then you have uniquely specified D8. If you have a collection of elements that similarly satisfy these 1, 2, 3 equations, you have D8. Here's the magic part. Now consider a map rho that takes in our element A and spits out some capital A and takes in our element B and spits out capital B. The convention that I'm going to try and stick to is that capital letters denote matrices and lowercase letters are just abstract group elements where A is given by this matrix right here and B is given by this matrix right here. Now if these two matrices satisfy these conditions, these equations, then these guys are generators of D8, and the group that they generate is going to be a copy of D8. So let's go ahead and check that that is the case. So here, I just went through all the matrix multiplication. I just calculated powers of A until we found the fourth power of A, and it was indeed the identity. Uh, I promise I'll get better at writing my identities. Just give me some time. And B was a little bit more forgiving, a little bit more gentle. Uh, we just had to calculate the square of it, and we did indeed find that it was the identity. So we've satisfied these two equations. We've got a good start. So now we need to check this guy, check that this holds. Thankfully, we found what A inverse and B inverse were earlier, right? If we look at these two equations right here, we have that A times A cubed is equal to the identity, so A cubed is also A inverse. And then here, since B squared is the identity, B is its own inverse. So I just plug those guys in here. B inverse is just B, we have A, B, and we want to check that it's equal to A inverse. If you calculate that out, you find that it is indeed A cubed, which we know is A inverse. So this equation holds, and we find that A and B, capital A and B, right, these two matrices, satisfy all of the equations in our presentation, so they do indeed generate D8, and we found that this is our homomorphism. Just kidding. So the real homomorphism, the full map, is of this form, right? 
any element of d8 can be written as a product of those two generators, some power of a times some power of b. We'll see all of those in just a second. And all that that map does is spit out powers of a and b, but now they're the matrix a and the matrix b that we saw earlier. And recall that a, whether it's capital A or, or lowercase a, right, a in the group before mapping or a in the, the matrix group after mapping, had degree 4. And B, again, both Bs, had degree 2. So I can be 0, 1, 2, or 3, right? If you get the 4, it's the same as A to the power of 0. And J can be 0 or 1. Again, because B squared is just equal to the identity. Another way that you sometimes see these written out is by a table. And I'm not very good at planning ahead, so my table was one element longer than I was hoping it would be. And so you see, here are all of our group elements from the abstract D8, and here are all of them after they have been mapped. This is the representation of D8, of, of row, right? The representation row of D8. And this, and this is a homomorphism that maps from G to GL2R. This full extension of row this map here is our first example of a representation. So we have that it's a homomorphism. We have a mapping from G to GL to R. So we have a degree 2 homomorphism over the field R, real numbers. So in a later video, we're going to look into more depth. Uh, what is going on? How do you come up with these sorts of representations, these mappings, row, and look at properties of representations. But this is just an introduction, and hopefully that gave you an idea of what's going on. See you in the next episode.